For more than a century, the global power grid has operated on over 60 million kilometers of electrical cable, enough to wrap around the Earth nearly 1,500 times. But what allows these seemingly slender wires to carry enormous amounts of energy, running non-stop for decades without failing? Inside each insulated layer lies a technical journey engineered down to thousandths of an inch, beginning with raw copper and aluminum extracted from deep within the Earth, then refined in blazing metallurgical furnaces reaching thousands of degrees Fahrenheit. This video takes you inside the world of electrical cables, where metal, heat, and industrial technology converge to create the invisible arteries that keep modern cities alive across the planet. Each year, the world spends between 180 and 200 billion USD on the production and installation of power cables. Beneath those seemingly delicate layers of plastic lies an entire journey, where copper and aluminum are refined under temperatures reaching thousands of degrees Fahrenheit, then drawn into the energy pathways that help power the planet. From the very first conductors of the 19th century, when electricity was taken out of the laboratory for the first time, to the millions of miles of cable now stretched across continents. These lines have become an indispensable part of the modern world. Only a few centimeters thick, yet each cable can transmit enough electrical energy to light an entire city. A feat made possible by metal, engineering, and a level of precision measured down to microscopic details. In massive industrial furnaces, the processed ore is heated to extremely high temperatures. Under the combined influence of heat and powerful electrical currents, the mineral bonds gradually break apart, allowing copper and aluminum to separate from their impurities and transition into a molten state. For copper, the liquid metal undergoes further refining to raise its purity, often through electrolysis, where electrical current removes undesirable elements at a microscopic level. For aluminum, the extracted alumina from bauxite is fed into an electrolytic reduction cell, where extremely strong electrical currents break the chemical bonds and release molten aluminum at approximately 142 degrees Fahrenheit, continuously collected at the bottom of the cell. Once the required technical parameters are reached, the molten copper and aluminum are transferred directly to the casting stage. The liquid metal is channeled into steel molds equipped with forced cooling systems, where the outer surface solidifies rapidly while the core cools gradually from the inside out, forming solid ingots with a fully defined cross-section. These still hot ingots are moved straight to the primary rolling line, where continuously rotating rollers exert tremendous pressure, compressing and elongating the metal step by step, reducing its cross-section and increasing its length. This hot working deformation not only establishes the initial dimensions of the conductive material, but also rearranges its internal crystalline structure, transforming the rough ingots into smaller semi-finished forms, such as round rods, flat strips, or elongated billets, precisely shaped to enter the high-speed wire drawing stage of electric cable production. After being cast into solid billets, the copper and aluminum are still far too large to be drawn into wire. The entire stream of hot billets is fed into a continuous rolling line, where they pass through multiple rolling stands, each stage reducing their cross-section further. While still retaining heat, the billets gradually shrink from massive blocks into long cylindrical forms. By the end of this stage, the material has transformed into uniform copper or aluminum rods with a diameter of about 8 millimeters the standard size needed before entering the wire drawing process. Inside the sealed drawing chamber, these rods undergo progressive deformation, turning into slender wires that are perfectly round, smooth on the surface and structurally consistent throughout. On each production line, dozens of bright copper or aluminum strands run in parallel at extremely high speeds, gliding over small guide pulleys that help maintain a stable path. Each strand is held in an ideal state of tension, straight, steady, free from twisting or breakage, preventing reductions in cross-section and enhancing mechanical strength through cold work hardening, a crucial factor that allows the wire to endure the demanding stages that follow. 
Across the entire line, laser-based sensors continuously monitor the diameter of each strand, and only then are the newly formed conductors wound onto heavy spools weighing tens of kilograms. After drawing, the copper wire is always collected into coils to stabilize production and allow for inspection before heat treatment. At this stage, even though it appears strong, the wire is still rigid due to internal stresses, meaning it can fracture if bent repeatedly. To correct this and bring the material back to a more stable state, the coils are transferred into sealed annealing chambers. Inside, the metal wire is heated to approximately 600 degrees Fahrenheit. A temperature high enough to act deeply on the wire's internal structure, yet carefully controlled to avoid distorting the material's original geometry. After the annealing process is complete, the slender metal wires enter a decisive stage. Stranding, the phase that defines the flexibility and tensile strength of the entire cable core. On each payoff reel rest hundreds to thousands of feet of refined copper or aluminum wire, all ready to merge into a conductor capable of carrying electrical loads reliably for decades. When the stranding machine begins operating, the entire array of bobbins rotates around a central axis, following a trajectory calculated with extreme precision. This rotational movement is not chaotic. It is a geometry so exact that a deviation of only a few thousandths of an inch can affect the uniformity of the entire core. From multiple directions, each fine wire is tensioned, guided across ceramic or hardened steel pulleys, and then brought together through a single forming die. This is the convergence point where every small strand begins twisting into one another according to a predetermined lay length. Long or short depending on the technical specifications of the cable being produced. Throughout the entire process, the control system maintains perfectly stable tension on every strand. On large industrial stranding machines, the rotational speed of the bobbin assembly creates a striking vortex of metal where dozens of individual wires fuse in a conductor that is flexible, round, durable, and resistant to breakage even when bent repeatedly during installation. During this stage, laser-based sensors continuously monitor the diameter of the finished core in real time. All measurement data is recorded to ensure that every coil leaving the production line meets the required mechanical properties as well as electrical performance standards. Once the twisting process is complete, the cable core reaches an ideal balance between flexibility, tensile strength, and stable conductivity. From here, the fully formed cores are spooled and transferred to the next major operation, insulation extrusion. From the tightly stranded cores, the journey to transform them into a fully finished electrical conductor begins with preparing the plastic materials used for insulation. In the material handling area, Aluminum silos standing dozens of feet tall are filled with PVC, XLPE, or PE pellets. Polymers selected according to the technical standards and operating conditions the cable must withstand. In the material processing area, PVC, PE, or XLPE pellets are fed into tall loading silos. Under the effect of a multi-zone heating system, the polymer granules gradually transition into a molten state. A dense, homogeneous, and steadily flowing stream of plastic along the screw is the core requirement for forming a flawless, insulating layer. At the front end of the line, the metal conductor, until now merely a bare electrical core, is guided through a central tube and sent directly into the extrusion head. Here, the molten plastic envelopes the copper or aluminum core according to a precisely engineered geometry. Even the slightest deviation can influence the thickness of the insulation layer. The moment the outer layer takes shape, the cable is led straight into a long cooling trough. The sharp temperature difference stabilizes the structure of the insulation, locking in the correct diameter and perfectly round profile required by technical standards. By the end of the extrusion stage, the conductor is no longer a simple metal rod. It has become a fully formed electrical cable flexible, uniform, and wrapped in a seamless, standardized insulating layer, ready for the next stage of processing, core stranding. When the insulated conductors have been fully completed, 
Their journey moves into a stage that defines the internal organization of the cable. Concentric stranding. On the factory floor, spools of differently colored conductors are arranged on massive rotating carriages. As the stranding machine begins to operate, the entire assembly rotates around a central axis following a precisely calibrated path. It is here that concentric twisting begins. Each insulated core rotates around the others according to a predetermined lay length. A longer lay produces greater flexibility for the cable. A shorter lay enhances bending strength and keeps the internal structure more stable when the cable is subjected to mechanical stress during installation. What matters most is uniformity. Every twist, every degree of rotation must match its specified value so the finished bundle maintains its geometric integrity and does not deform when bent. This is the foundational form of a multi-core electrical cable, prepared for the protective layers that follow. On large-scale stranding machines, the rotation combined with continuous pulling force creates a distinct mechanical vortex where multiple independent cores are organized into a unified structure, firm, resilient, and surprisingly flexible. When the entire internal structure has been fully defined, the cable moves into its most critical layer of protection, the outer sheath. At the extrusion head, the cable is pulled through a central guide tube and is immediately cast into a thick, seamless jacket, the first layer of armor shielding it from the harsh forces of the environment. This outer sheath carries a vital responsibility, resisting UV radiation that accelerates aging, preventing water and moisture intrusion, and protecting the cable from oils and chemicals. By the time it leaves this stage of the production line, the cable has acquired its fully formed shield, ready for the final series of tests before it enters service across electrical networks around the world. When the outer sheath has been fully formed, the cable enters one of the most decisive stages, testing and quality verification. Here, every meter of cable must prove that it is strong enough to serve the power grid through decades of real-world operation. The inspection process begins with core resistance measurements, assessing the conductivity of each metal strand that has been stranded and annealed. Certain specialized cable types undergo even more stringent examinations. Flame resistance tests in evaluations of how fire may propagate, precise measurements of insulation and sheath thickness using calibrated sensors, and tensile or bending tests to determine mechanical durability. Every parameter is checked against international standards before a cable can be approved. Only the coils that successfully pass this entire sequence of tests are allowed to move on to the packaging stage. When the cable has passed every stage of testing, it enters the final phase, reeling, cutting, and packaging. On the factory floor, Massive wooden reels stand ready to receive medium and low voltage cables, while residential wiring is neatly wound onto smaller bobbins. Each reel is cut to its exact specified length and labeled with a full identification tag, clearly stating the cable type, technical standards, production batch, and precise length. From this point, the product is fully completed, ready to be loaded into shipping containers for export or delivered to electrical distributors across the country. The journey of an electric cable begins deep underground, at mineral deposits that contain the two essential conductive metals, copper and aluminum. For copper, high-powered drilling systems penetrate straight through layers of solid rock, creating deep blast holes for explosive charges. Controlled detonations are then triggered with precise calculations, fracturing the geological structure and releasing massive blocks of copper-bearing ore. For aluminum, the process unfolds in enormous bauxite mines, most of which operate as open pit sites. Here, giant excavators strip away the overlying layers of soil and rock, revealing the aluminous bauxite seams beneath. Once exposed, immense hydraulic shovels gather the ore, each block weighing tens of tons and loaded onto specialized mining trucks with payloads reaching hundreds of tons. These trucks run continuously along dedicated haul roads, transporting raw material out of the extraction zone. At the collection area, 
the copper ore and bauxite are dumped into feed hoppers and transferred onto conveyor systems stretching hundreds of meters. Here the material undergoes primary crushing and coarse screening to remove soil and unwanted debris. What remains is further reduced in size, preparing it for the metal refining stages that follow. Heavy freight trains and high-capacity cargo vessels then take over the next leg of transportation, each carrying thousands of tons of material to refineries and processing plants. This unbroken chain of extraction, handling, and early processing forms the essential foundation of the metallurgical industry and marks the very beginning of the long, intricate journey that ultimately becomes an electric cable. From the fine copper strands to the thick insulating layers, and finally to the twisted bundles that form each core, an electrical cable is born from a journey in which every detail carries critical importance. Behind it lies an entire operating system far more complex than it appears, where even the smallest element plays a vital role. A power cable may look simple, yet inside it is a structure controlled down to fractions of a millimeter, where insulation performance and heat resistance determine the safety of millions of people. If you want to explore more manufacturing processes behind the materials that keep the world running, hit the like button. Tell us in the comments which stage impressed you the most and subscribe to the channel. The next journey will take you there.